Hi, I'm Tom Garrity from Williams College, and I'm going to be talking about a new scheme for classifying real numbers with the ideas coming from or being inspired from statistical mechanics. The punchline is associated to every real number will be a statistical mechanical system. Different real numbers will be classified based on the phase transition properties of the corresponding statistical mechanical system. So this paper has two parts. One is the you know, background from statistical mechanics, and the other is the actual number theory results, the actual classification. So starting with the statistical mechanics. Now, statistical mechanics is the area of physics which tries to explain macroscopic phenomena by microscopic phenomena. You know, like, why does water freeze? Things like, why can there be a continuous parameter, like temperature, moving nicely and continuously and has something really strange happen, like when water freezes? For example, you have a bucket of water, it's getting close to zero degree centigrade, it's still liquid water, liquid water hits zero degrees, boom, stops for a while, freezes up, and it gets colder again. That's weird. Here's how physicists try to understand this. What they do is they start with something called the state space. The state space is what can happen. For water, be all the little molecules where they could be at a given temperature. For each state in the state space, for each thing that can happen, they associate an energy. From this energy, they form the partition function. It's the partition function that's important. From the partition function, it is believed almost anything interesting about the system can be discovered. In particular, from the partition function, they can get the free energy. And the belief is that phase transition occurs, things like freezing, occur when this free energy has a point of non-analyticity a place where either its first derivative breaks down or it's not continuous, etc. That's the inspiration from physics. We're now going to shift to number theory. And the way to do it is we're going to try to set up a system, something like a, a, a state space, and then find the analog of partition function. From being inspired from the physics, we will say something that we should be like of the free energy, and then look at when does this free energy have points of non-analyticity? Or where's their phase transition? So the state space for number theory, we have for each integer n, we start with state space S1, which consists of the fraction 0 over 1, 1 over 1. Then we let S2 is 0 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 1. S3 is 0 over 1, 1 over 3, 1 over 2, 2 over 3, 1 over 1, etc. Notice that we're generating all rational numbers. You give me any rational, it'll eventually fall into one of these state spaces. The partition function is defined as follows. We just look at the sum over all these states. Oh, given a real number alpha, we can then form the partition function as follows. It's just the summation over all those fractions in the given state space, 1 over alpha q minus p raised to the beta. Beta, for a physicist, should remind you of 1 over temperature. Though, of course, there's no temperature here, it's just numbers. Notice what's happening here. That alpha q minus beta is in the denominator. When it is small, when p, when p over q is really close to alpha, when we have a good rational approximation for alpha, denominator small, 1 over it, huge, it dominates. We're now ready to give the classification scheme. We can now give the definition for the classification scheme. A real number alpha will be said to have a k-free energy limit if there is some beta sub c such that the limit of the log of the partition function divided by beta times n to the k exists for all beta bigger than beta of c. When k is 1, it's the 1 free energy limit, and that really is the analog of a physicist's free energy. Now, this classification scheme would be worthless if no real number had such a k-free energy limit, or if all numbers had such a k-free energy limit. It only makes sense if for some numbers had different types of properties. 
That was the key theorems in this paper. So, the first theorem is there are real numbers with k-free energy limits. The next theorem is there are numbers without k-free energy limits. The, uh, the theorem is that all algebraic numbers have k-free energy limit for k greater than 1. Further, it's shown that all quadratic irrationals have one free energy limit. There's a slight bell and whistle you can add to the definition, and you can get that E has square root of n log square root of n free energy limit. All the proofs have nothing to do with physics or any ideas from physics. They're all basic number theory, basic Diophantine approximation properties. Um, as you see on the slide, it's the moral of this is how good of an approximation we get from the continued fraction expansion of alpha determines the k-free energy limitness of the number alpha. There's lots of questions open. This is the paper itself is heavily involved with continued fractions. There are analogs to continued fractions, certainly like multi-dimensional continued fractions. You can do the same thing, play the same game there. Now, this is far from the first, I'm, I'm far from the first person to use ideas from thermodynamics to apply a number theory. This was done back in the early 70s by Meyer and many others. They mainly concerned themselves with transfer operators. None of that's showing up in this paper at all. This paper was inspired by work of Knopf and Fiala, Kleven, Fiala, Kleven, and Orslak and others. Uh, I took their work, tried to distill the linear algebra, or the basically two by two matrices there, saw that by seemingly tweaking their work, you were led quite far away from what they did into the heart of Diophantine analysis into this classification scheme. Thank you.